<coughs> okay, so now we will carry on with D. Lovely question. It says, what is the change in kinetic energy measured by someone riding a bicycle at the velocity of the paintball before the collision? What is now the change in kinetic energy measured by somebody in another reference frame? And this inertial reference frame is a bicycle. Someone riding on a bicycle at a velocity of the paintball. Okay? Alright, so now, this is a nice question. So let's redraw this. You've got this paintball going at 11 meters per second. And you've got the disc. The velocity of the disc is zero. But now you've got a bicycle, okay, imagine that's a, just a, use your, please use your imagination, that's a, a bicycle, there's your handlebars, okay, and there's somebody, somebody sitting on it, okay, imagine that's a person, okay, moving at 11 meters per second. So everything that we calculated before, this whole thing, KE system, plus K, uh, sorry, let me do that again, K system in the E reference frame, the Earth reference frame, is equal to the K center of mass, remember that that was in the Earth reference frame, plus the convertible kinetic energy. Right? We looked at that er the original problem in the Earth reference frame, but now we want to look at it in the bike reference frame, which is moving at 11 meters per second. So, um, the way I want to look at this is, what is your initial and final, first of all, let's, as you can see, I'm not answering these questions directly. I want, I want us to investigate this problem. Let's look at how you calculate each of these terms. Remember that this term over here is half MPVP squared plus half m d v d squared. Okay, I think we're all happy with that. And this was half m p plus m d times v center of mass squared. And then we had the, the k. Actually, I want to, I want to re rewrite this guy. And this time I'm just going to use that formula that we know plus half m p m d over m p plus m d and then this will be v relative so it's the v p d squared do you understand what where this comes from the the this is your convertible kinetic energy You've got the, the, the multiply the inertias, and then you divide by the sum of the inertias, and then you multiply by the relative velocity between these two objects. The relative velocity between the two objects. So that's why I say VPD. The relative velocity is VPD. D relative to P. Okay? So I know I've scrunched it in there. Um, so maybe I can just even rewrite this. Okay, V P D squared. So that's how, th this is how you calculate it. And remember, all of this is in the, these velocities are in the, in the Earth reference frame. Okay? Now, what do you notice about this velocity here? The convertible kinetic energy. The, the velocity for the convertible kinetic energy. Do you see that it's a relative velocity between object 1 and object 2? Do you see that these velocities, the velocity for this object and for that object, is in the Earth reference frame originally? But this velocity is the velo relative velocity between the two objects. So my question is, if I begin to measure the kinetic energy of the system in the bike reference frame, what is going to change here? 
what kinetic energy will change and what will not change? I think you can see it, right? So in the B reference frame, I'm going to have half MP VP, but now in a different reference frame. So my velocity of this object in the B reference frame is different. Okay, which means the kinetic energy is different. So I'm going to have it again, D, V, velocity of D in the B reference frame is different. Equals, I'm going to take this equals, put it over here, half M P plus M D. By the way, the inertia stay the same in, in any inertial reference frame. And the velocity of the center of mass in the B reference frame, is that the same as, th as the velocity in the E reference frame, or is it different? What's, what do you say? Well, first of all, always go back to first principles. How do you calculate the velocity of the center of mass in any reference frame? It is the MP velocity of P plus MD velocity of D over the total inertia. So the velocity of P is different in the B reference frame and the velocity of D is different in the, in the, in the uh, B reference frame. So, the velo so let's just say the velocity of the center of mass in the E reference frame is not the same as the velocity of the center of mass in the B reference frame. They're not the same. So both these two terms, your K, your system kinetic energy, and your convertible, so your center of mass kinetic energy, these both change in different reference frames. They're both different. But this stays the same. Why? This is the same in any inertial reference frame because it is the vel relative velocity between the two objects. It's not the vel relative velocity between the object and the reference frame. It is the relative velocity between the two objects. Okay? So, that... So, this stays the same. Your K convertible is the same in any inertial reference frame but your but your your system kinetic energy and your con and your center of mass kinetic energy chain is different in different inertial reference frames okay so now if you go and calculate k of the system in the B inertial reference frame initial, you're going to get half M uh, B, uh, sorry, half M P V P squared, but now it's in the B inertial reference frame plus half M D V D, but it's in the B reference frame squared, and you're going to calculate something there. And if I'm not mistaken, this should be 4.53 joules. Do you see how the, the kinetic energy is different? In the A reference frame, or the Earth reference frame, if you remember, it was 3.025. And in this reference frame, it's 4.53. And what is the kinetic, the final kinetic energy? It would be half m p plus m d times the velocity final squared and this would be 2.72 joules and so your delta k in the b reference frame is 2.72 minus 4.53 is equal to what do you think that will be equal to has to be equal to minus 1.81 joules so your delta K in a, in a new inertial reference frame has to be the same. Okay? So 
I hope we're getting some kind of uh, three-dimensional understanding of what's going on here. That this ball smashes against there, it splats, and they begin to move at the same velocity. So the maximum amount of kinetic energy was converted, okay? But because the object is still moving, there is still this non con this non convertible kinetic energy. Okay? So if you have any questions about this, give me a shot. Okay, cheers.